near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Complete Invincible Library Volume 5 from Image Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before getting started, a big thank you to the folks at Skybound for sending us an advanced copy of this library edition. This book is due out in the direct market and book market on April 30th of 2024. Now, the very first thing we got to do is take it out of this shrink wrap because all these library editions do come shrink wrapped. So out of there all right now let's talk about this book okay now that we have it out of the shrink wrap we can take a closer look here at invincible and adam eve there invincible with his new costume the complete invincible library volume five this piece by ryan otley this is the part of the logo the invincible logo which we'll see here when we open up the book and then the back of the slip case with again mark and eve right there and the back of the slip case image logo the complete invincible library kirkman otley rathburn Roch, and below in volume five and here's where you're going to find the isbn it's the regular edition. I assume there is a limited signed edition as well. The retail price of this one, $125. The art on board is a wraparound piece where you have Anissa right here. And then in the back, you have Dinosaurus. But again, the logo is wrapped around the front and the backboard. And there is no dust jacket on the book itself. So we are going to open this up. I'm going to give a spoiler-free look at the artwork and talk a little bit about the story without going into spoilers but then i am also going to have a spoiler section but i'll let you know ahead of time when i'm going to do that uh, but before i do that we'll look at a little bit of the book and look at the extras and also the build of it so let's go ahead and crack it open okay and opening the book up we have some orange end sheets and the Complete Invincible Library, Volume 5, created by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker. And this entire volume right here is written by Robert Kirkman, but also penciled by Ryan Otley. Corey Walker doesn't come back for this particular volume. He will be back for the next and last one. That's the other thing I was going to say, is that the next library edition of the slipcases is going to be the last one. That will wrap up the entirety of Invincible. Uh, but you do have him back as not only penciler, but also the inker of some chapters. Uh, Cliff Rathburn doing some of the inking. John Rauch doing the coloring. And then Jean-Francois Bellot doing the colors for the final few issues that are collected in here. Russ Wooten supplying the lettering for the entire book. Uh, Dave McCagg doing the colors for the collection. So we start off with a story, and it is a really dark story, about the origin of bulletproof and who he is uh who which one of the brothers is it is it tyrone or is it zendel well you can figure that out by yourself in the spoiler section i'll talk a little bit more about that story this is very meta with the creator of science dog talking about how sometimes you have to make a story dark uh eve and mark are still dealing with the changes to mark that happened in the previous volume uh, because of the Viltrumite War and what happened with the solution that Alan had. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the spoiler section. But I just wanted to showcase the artwork. Mark does have a new costume again. And Bulletproof, whomever he may be, uh, one of the brothers, is now also going as Invincible. Because the world needs an Invincible. So, Dinosaurus plays a big part in the first third act. And he is, is kind of like your supervillain that is trying to do the right thing. Because I think 
you know, like they say, the greatest villains are always the ones that are heroes in their mind. And that's the way he sees the world, so he wants to fix it. And what he decides to do, it's it's just going to cost so many lives. So Mark has to put a stop to it. So they get into this huge fight, and he tells them exactly what his plan is, and oh my gosh, what ends up happening throughout this book is insane. Issue 99 is this huge splash page war. I love it. It's very reminiscent of things that John Byrne has done, very reminiscent of Savage Dragon, where the entire issue is told through a splash page, and then there's also a couple of spread pages through here. Now, when you get to issue 100, by the way, this does collect issues 97 to 120 of Invincible, 624 pages. When you get to issue 100, Robert Kirkman promised a big death was coming, and you can find out exactly who that big death was. And just showcasing a little bit more of the artwork through here, and again, Mark changing his costume up, you can find out why. And there's different story arcs being told through here. And the third act, I can't even show you any of the pictures because I want people to be surprised in case they're waiting to read this for themselves or in case they're wanting to watch the show. If you're a fan of the show and you want to want like get to this point, it won't be until probably season four or five, depending on how much they get from the, for the next season. But yeah, if you're enjoying the show, oh my gosh, you are in for a freaking treat. There's so many twists and turns and just crazy things that end up happening through here uh, one of the things that does end up happening through here is a very controversial plot line that i don't want to spoil for anybody uh, but i remember when i was reading this as the comics were coming out i was getting it in trade paperback people having a big issue and it, it kind of divided people some people didn't like it some people did uh, you know i always tell people to read it for themselves and judge for themselves uh, but it is a sexual assault that ends up happening if you're, those kind of things trigger you i do like to give that type of warning uh, i think that's all i will show as far as uh the artwork through here without going into some deep deep spoilers but let's look in the back and even the back i can't show you everything okay i lied i have to show you a little bit of battle beast because he's one of my favorite characters all right now let's look in the back at the sketchbook the sketchbook is one of my favorite things that Ryan Otley and Corey Walker would add to these hardcover collections. So this actually has a couple more pages, and those couple of pages are pretty much just the covers to the oversized hardcovers, the Ultimate Collections. And just making sure that there's no spoilers that I'm looking at through here, because there are, especially when you're looking at character designs or just original pages, there are some spoilers that happen through here that I don't want people to be ruined for. Uh, to get ruined for them. And sketch designs for the return of Angstrom Levy there. Who you've met in the TV show if you're coming here from the TV show. And skipping a couple of pages to show off some character designs of some newer characters. That will play an important part through here. And I love when they share this stuff. This, these are like convention sketches that they do. I love it. I think it's so freaking cool that they share this kind of stuff and this is the kind of stuff i would love to see more of um because I, I feel like these are something really special that belong to somebody i think there's one in here of thrag as freddie mercury if i'm not mistaken or maybe that was in the previous volume and speaking of previous volumes i was told that i never did an overview of volume four so Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I've recorded it the same day I've recorded this one. So keep an eye out on the channel. That will be dropping sometime soon. That one was reprinted last year. Late last year. And skipping some of the thumbnail sketches that Ryan Otley did. Because it spoils part of the storyline. So we're going back to these convention sketches. Some of them of course never happening in the book. So just keep that in mind. They're just fun convention sketches. And then from thumbnail sketch to an actual finished pencil. Man, that is... Even without the blood and the colors, that looks so freaking violent. I love it. And here's some concept designs. Yeah, I knew there was a Freddie Mercury. <laughs> um, it was in this one. Okay, and then the trade paperback covers, because they always did new covers for the trade paperbacks. 
and then the cover for the oversized hardcover. So the two of them, I guess that would be volumes nine and volume 10 right there. And then where else you can find more Invincible and your end sheets. Now let's look at the build. The book has 624 pages. It is sewn binding. And this is what it looks like when there's spread pages and there's plenty of those. But I wanted to come back to the beginning to kind of show you the way it laid over. Very minimal gutter loss. And it is printed in this thick glossy paper stock. Same as volume 1 reprint and... Well, the volume four I just did, but you haven't seen the video yet. But there is some bleed through happening from the opposite page. It's not as thick as the Rick Remender library edition books, uh, but it is glossy paper. And you have minimal bleed through happening from the other side, but it is happening. All right. Now, in case you've read this already or in case you don't care about spoilers, I am going to talk about spoilers because... I love this damn story. It's one of my top 10 favorite image titles. Maybe I need to revisit that video. I did a video of my favorite 10 image titles, I think four years ago. Maybe it's time to revisit and see if I still feel the same. So moving forward, spoilers, please. I don't want to ruin this for anybody just in case you're watching the TV show. So let's bring it back to the very front here, looking at Anissa and of course Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs plays a huge part at the very beginning, Anissa playing that part that I mentioned about sexual assault later on, which we'll get to in a bit. But first, let's go from the beginning here, uh, where we talk about Zandel and his brother Tyrone, and which one is wearing the bulletproof armor. And man, this story is dark. Zandel tells his parents the truth that Tyrone was a jerk. And even though he was smart, he wanted to experiment on his brother and use him as a guinea pig. And because he discovered a way to give people superpowers because he was just so infatuated with these super abilities that people had. He ended up killing himself and giving powers to Zandel. And since they're twins, Zandel, fake being his brother Tyrone, his parents apparently adored him so much that they didn't even notice. So he tells them here and they refuse to believe them. They, be they, they refuse to believe that... Tyrone was a bad person. So, you know, even telling them about how he became bulletproof and is doing the world right. Man, this is, this was hard to read because the parents are just jerks. But, oh my gosh, what happens next? Wow. <laughs> Sandel's girlfriend kills his mom. And then, and then he accidentally kills his dad. Oh man, Carla just out of nowhere. And then there's a funeral. And the funeral is like, oh, I'm sorry about your loss. And now they have to keep that secret. And then we cut to this. This is what I was talking about. Where Philip Shaft, the guy that uh, is working on Science Dog, which is still a comic that Mark is collecting, even though he was away for a while. He comes back and gets his comics. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to go dark with the story. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Very meta. I love the cosplay here from The Walking Dead. I think that's supposed to be Slave Zombie Leia. And that's obviously Michonne right there. But this shows how Mark and Eve are adopting, like, they're just adapting to life now because he has lost his powers, because the Viltrumites, after, after the big Viltrumite war, Alan said, okay, we need to get rid of the Viltrumites, and that all happened in the previous volume, which I'll talk about, like I said, I've already filmed, I just need to find a day to release it. So he ended up losing his power, but of course he gets his power back by, well, let's just say... Having a good time with Eve. Now, there's two bulletproofs, and Mark is mature enough to realize that the world does need two of them. Then we have the return of Angstrom here, who plays a big part towards the beginning, but more so Dinosaurus. And what Dinosaurus wants to do is get rid of millions of people to destroy Los Angeles. But he lies to Mark saying, yeah, I want to destroy Los Angeles. He actually planted bombs all over the world and tried to kill millions and millions of people and sort of succeeded. I mean, this is a huge battle and it's also a huge rescue mission. I mentioned the battle, but I didn't talk about the rescue mission. People are being saved all over the world. I love that Thrag is like, we are Viltrumites. We do not get involved. You get involved. You will face my wrath. Still trying to be that leader. And yes, right here, issue 99. This is where... Dinosaurus says there's only one way to do this and he ends up killing Mark in issue 100 
this is what Robert Kirkman was talking about, that there was going to be a big death, and it was Mark. However, within just a few pages, you think Mark's in heaven, everybody's reacting to his death, but what actually happened is that Dinosaurus wanted people to believe that Mark was dead so they could work together, so he got a clone out of a portal and killed that clone. So, that's that was his plan. However, he realizes that Mark can do things without him, that he's not needed. So he asks Mark to kill him. And off screen, sure enough, Mark kills him. Cecil comes in and he's like, how'd you find me? And he was like, well, I traced the signal. This is where he tells him that he knows about what happened in space. He When he found out about Conquest, that they resurrected Conquest here on Earth. And it was Cecil that was the one that was behind everything. So I thought that confrontation was awesome. Everybody finds out that Mark is alive. Eve lays it out that she's pregnant. Man, there's so many things. This is so hard to talk about in a non-spoilery way. Nolan and his lady, you know, the, doing their thing like they always do. Now, with the death of dinosaurs, this is where... He, oh, I love this. He left a thumbprint in there because he was like, I don't want you bringing him back to life. And I knew that you would one day like you did Conquest. I have to trust you again, Cecil. So he has to tell Eve that he's working with Cecil again because he feels like, okay, look, we can trust him. He can take care of us. You're pregnant. I'm going to be a father. So this is where things get really interesting because Thrag takes it upon himself, even though he told the Viltrumites not to get involved with this big thing that's happening on Earth with all these disasters, he still has this freaking wrath that he wants to just let loose on Nolan and Mark. Because he knew the truth. He found out the truth in the previous volume. He found out that they were the true heirs of Argal. And they they need to know their place. However, Nolan beats the crap out of him. And the Viltrumites overhear everything that... Oh, Nolan and Mark are the true heirs? Well, then. It looks like we now found ourselves a new leader. So... Mark gets engaged, of course Eve says yes, and then Angstrom Levy comes back, and he starts to come back in the background. Uh, this is where you get a little bit of Rex Robot, like, talking more about his life with Monster Girl in the other dimension uh, that they were they were living in, the, what was it called, the uh, Flaxan, the Flaxan dimension, and how they were much happier there. And speaking of dimensions, that's something that angstrom does is he comes to punish mark but not by killing him or hurting him but by hurting eve and this unborn baby she's pregnant so he sends him off to this dimension where he sees other people other invincibles other marks and the way that they turned out one of them was a complete cannibal the other one's a psychopath and they come from different worlds and this guy right here with the mohawk says i know what we're gonna do with angstrom in my world so i'll take him with us so this gets really, really interesting because now he seeks Robot out because he feels like Robot can help him and Rex. I'll just keep calling him Rex. Uh, can help him find Angstrom because he knows he's out there and he's going to do something horrible when he comes back. So Robot eventually does show up and say, hey, I finally found him. I, we can go and get him. Battle Beast gets sent on a special mission, which is to kill Thrag, because Nolan was a lot more noble than Thrag ever was, so what he does is just, he exiles Thrag. After he tries to take his own, like, tries to kill Nolan, he just exiles him, and he tells him to get away from everybody, to leave this space, and never return. So, Alan doesn't really trust that Thrag will stay away, so he sends Battle Beast after him, and that becomes so freaking epic if you've read this. You already know how amazing that is. But this is when things get really interesting. Rex and Monster Girl are still... You know, they're dealing with their feelings for each other. They have their kid here from another dimension. And they we found out... And we found out in the previous volume... Just how close they were and how close they got. And how much of a leader, how much that world needed Rex, the Flaxen dimension... And Issa gets a little bit closer and closer uh, to Mark, finding him pretty unique. So she's looking for a mate, pretty much. Remember, in the previous volume, 
um, is where Thrag was like, you know, go and live amongst the humans, but by all means, your main job is to repopulate the Viltrumite Empire. So just have at it. And she couldn't find a worthy human, but she finds something in Mark. And this is what I was talking about. She ends up getting really infatuated with him. And that leads into a storyline that we'll talk about here in a second. But first, let's talk about this that I was saying. Uh, Robot Rex, I'm sorry, did find Angstrom. And he's like, hey, I know where to get him. So they go to another dimension. This is where he finds this particular Invincible. And there's Angstrom. And Robot turns on every one of them. Killing Angstrom, which is just crazy. Killing this Invincible. And warning Mark that he's going to leave him here to stay. Because he doesn't see a world where he is as important as he was in the flag as as he was in the flax end dimension. So without Invincible, the world will need him. And his logic, you know, doesn't make any sense from an outsider's perspective, but it makes sense like, oh, that's why he's doing that. That's kind of weird. So of course, you know, Mark does end up finding a way back home. He gets into a fight with Eve because she thought he was dead after he spent six months in this dimension trying to make it back. And she's like, I'm ending things. I have your baby, but I don't want you around. So he's all broken, and that's when Anissa finds him. And she's like, hey, we're going to mate. And that's all I want. And he starts fighting her, and she's like, oh, yeah, that's how I like it. So that's this is the mating ritual, maybe for the Viltrumites. We never really saw Viltrumites get together. It's always like a uh, half, you know... It, it's always like a Viltrumite and then somebody from another race. But that's what ends up happening and you can see exactly how it happens. Which I won't spoil in case you haven't read all of Invincible. But let's talk about this because now Robot finds out Mark is back. Mark told Cecil, hey, Robot's bad. Like, Rex, we can't trust him. Okay, well, let's do... Oh, too late. Dude, he just completely kills Cecil right in front of Mark. And sends out his goons to go after everybody including adam eve and threaten her and what ends up happening my gosh you know this is just one of his suits ends up ripping her leg right off i mean this is a pregnant woman and mark just freaks out he's got to get his wife to safety and robot just releases his protocol so some good guys will end up dying through here. Some innocent people will end up dying. Some villains that you've seen in the past will end up dying. And it's just his plan. And his plan is like, I, I need to be in charge. I need to be in charge of everything. And people find out, you know, including Monster Girl. And he has her arrested. So people turn on each other. Superheroes turn on each other. And there is his little girl finally born. And Eve is fine. But she tells Mark to go and kick Robot's ass. I love this part where he's like, hey, we're going to get back together. And she's like, Mark, shut up and go save the world. Oh, I love that. She's such a great character. So he does in the next issue. However, he doesn't do it in the invincible style. He actually has a conversation with Rex. And Rex tells him the plan. It's like, look, I'm going to be in charge. I'm taking over the world. You know, we're going to stop diseases. We're going to make sure everybody eats. There's going to be improvements in science and technology. How could you not accept this? You either accept this or I will kill you and your family. So Mark accepts it. He accepts the feat, which is so crazy. And of course, Rex doesn't really feel 100% great about it. The next few issues, the background or the backup story is just Battle Beast and Thrag, who is trying to repopulate the Viltrumite Empire with these ladies uh it's the same race that nolan was with this race right here but these issues are nothing but a huge fight oh my gosh they were some of my favorite parts but yeah he is thrag's been busy and you know how fast these kids grow so he's building an army so unfortunately what mark decides after giving up is that they need to leave earth they need to start over on a different planet and alan can find him a planet this battle between Battle Beast and Thrag just lasts forever, but I loved it. Uh, they're still trying to find the, a, a name for the kid. I love this part where Mark goes and picks up his comics because he's leaving Earth uh, with Eve. He runs into uh, his ex-girlfriend here, and he sees that she's with somebody else and that somebody's making her happy, so he's like, just smiles and flies away. That was a nice part. Uh, that was Amber. 
and let's see here this is where a robot shows up and then you know there's characters like the immortal there's characters that feel like they've been completely betrayed by him more of that fighting eve telling her parents that they're leaving mark telling his mom and dad they're both leaving and they're going to start a life on a different planet because he can't be here because people just will blame him eventually the kid gets named when they're taken off to space and her name is tara how beautiful and they end up on this planet called tells uh Talis Taliskria, where alan gives him a home and oliver finally comes back he's been there with his new girlfriend who's this giant cockroach but hey man i ain't knocking it if that's what you're into that's what you're into and remember he ages differently than humans he's um he's got the powers of viltrumites and also um a half bug i guess there's a food poisoning and Mark realizes the more they live there, you know, it's threatening not just him and Eve, but also the baby's life. He finds out that Alan has sent Battle Beast on a mission, and Battle Beast has failed. Eventually, the fight is over, and Thrag kills Battle Beast. And when you see Thrag again, it is the most disturbing, like, man, that ain't right. Why would they do this? So Mark has to decide whether to go and take out Thrag or stay with Eve. And that will be in the next volume. And here is Thrag with wearing a battle beast. Like, 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 damn, that's messed up. I love it. It's badass. It shows how freaking horrible of a character Thrag is. But that was my favorite character. So don't get attached to too many of the characters in Invincible. Now we can look at all of the extras, which I did a little bit earlier. And, um, but I didn't show off like things like this. this you know, you have the sketches. And the pencil and then the inks right there love this stuff um while the viltrumite war was my favorite part of invincible the stuff in here is really good and then the next volume will conclude invincible and i can't wait to talk about that that volume six i believe comes out in june and they've yet to reprint volume two i believe that's still scheduled for may or april i'll have to find out and reprint volume three i think but that's it but that was my really spoilery overview. Let me know if you enjoy those. If you want me to get more spoilery with these uh, overviews. Especially for something that's been out this long. Uh, but that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this library edition, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this library edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking this up, if you have the previous library editions and this is the way you love collecting Invincible, or if you've never read Invincible and you're just going straight into the library editions. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.